you get off the train station here in Takao, uh, there's a little restaurant right there. You can see the red, white, and yellow flags. Apparently one of them says Hambagu, which is like a patty of hamburger, but seasoned a little tiny bit, and then they serve it different ways. Well, anyway, that's what you're looking for when you come here to this little town around lunchtime or dinner time. Go to that spot and get the Japanese style one. They've got one with like red sauce on it and one with like the traditional brown sauce on it, both, you know, Japanese style, but there's this other one with daikon radish on it and this ponzu sauce and this little salad with some kind of delicious corn kind of dressing. I don't know. Either way, go there, try it. I'm telling you, it's amazing. We're at the Takao train station waiting for the train to take us up to the mountain. Up, oh, not waiting anymore. Buddhist cemetery. And temple. Tunnel number two. So it's Friday and we decided to come on out to Mount Takao because apparently it can get pretty busy on the weekends. More so in autumn, but um, we just wanted to make sure. And there's also a flea market we want to go to tomorrow. So this is Tagao San Gucci, which is just a uh, Tagao San like entrance. Gucci is like mouth or opening. Um, and uh, the station's on the Keio line. And we actually rode in on a different line and then switched over and came up here. But we're about to go ride the cable car or the chairlift. We don't know which one yet. We'll, <laughs> we'll have to decide once we see it. That's neat. The man with the big red nose on the sign is Tengu and uh, their shrine, one of the shrines on the mountain is dedicated to him, so he's a big deal around here. And why is that? Was he special for some specific reason? I don't know all of his story. He's just one of the uh, revered Shinto deities. We'll have to read about it when we get up there. He's one that a lot of people like. There's masks that are really common with him. People have probably seen those. Red face, big nose mask. Oh, he's the red face, big nose mask. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, right. And I don't know. I bet most Japanese don't know like super detailed stories. The same way you think like, <laughs> does your average American actually know details of the stories of Jesus or? Probably not, but they're rocking a cross because that's their heritage. And the... ooh, this is pretty. We'll have to get some matcha ice cream on the way back down. Ooh, 
Wow, it cool. got dramatically cooler. Yeah. Now there's a hiking gear store. Smart placement. Cool, it's a giant map. <sighs> Lost the mic just in that little short distance. Oh, but mm -hmm. it came back. Lots of little cute places on and going down here. Ooh, there's a statue of flying squirrels. So, or sugar gliders. I'm gonna be really excited if we see any of those. Okay, decision time. Do we want to ride in the cable car or the chairlift? Oh, the chairlift. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I'm getting us the water so we'll get thirsty on the cable car. This is like a Gatorade. Mm, it's good. Okay, we're gonna get some Asahi water. No dogs or cats on the cable car, you big dummy. Okay. Some of the things people may be worried about when coming to a foreign country, like, how am I going to figure out how to get tickets? Well, I don't know about everywhere else, but here in Japan, if you speak... Any of the major languages, you can, you can find it. Many things like food and literally tickets to get on things. You can order just like this. Even little restaurants there you would think you would have to be able to speak. Nah, you just go up to a little ticket thing just like this. If you watch one of our other videos, you'll see that um, we walked through an area that supplies restaurant equipment and one of several of the stores were ticket machines only it's a big deal it's prevalent <laughs> what here's the um here's the extremely easy no big deal Japanese hiking trail. <laughs> what stairs? Yeah. <laughs> Only a little bit steep. Although language may not be the biggest barrier, if you can't get around easily, 
that could be tough in a lot of these places we've gone to, including the subway. Thank you. There we go. I have no safety bar. This is I mean, my. This is we're my. We're only four feet off the ground. Right now. Here's a little stamping kiosk. We've been stamping our stuff. Katie does scrapbook for all of our adventures. Um, so, here we are. This is like a little stamp passport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not trying to get all of those, but I at least want We got our stamp and wow. we literally walk 15, 20, 30 feet and then our first view. And this isn't even the main one, I don't think. Yeah. We're at 462 meters and we're going up to like 600 something meters. That's the view. No, we're not at the top. Just keep going up and there's, I guess, a few of these type of spots to stop at. Look at that. Wow. And then there's a restaurant, 120 minutes, all you can drink. You know, you get a view. You pay for the view, but don't you always? Back on the trail. Oh. I don't really know anything about bugs or I don't even know if they can, if you can see that in the video. There's one close to us too. They're kind of colorful. Yeah, really colorful butterfly. Almost rainbow. there's one right behind us. They're all over the place. Oh, there's another one. Wow, oh my God, it's like <laughs> a magical butterfly garden. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we right now? Look how so cool. Oh my gosh, if, <laughs> if one landed on me, I would be... Oh, how lucky would that be? Yeah. Look at this tree. Wow. It says it's a konara. I don't know what that means, but that's what that says. Oh yeah. Okay, so would we walk like 50 feet and here's another viewing point, more benches, more drinks. This is the... Oh, that's the easy trail. 
<laughs> yeah, that's trail number two, which is slightly more difficult. That one's apparently the way you go to see a waterfall. But I'm not trying to break my leg in Japan. <laughs> Park. Oh, the monkey family tree. It's cute. This is called the Takosugi, which is the octopus-shaped cedar. And you can see on that tablet, there's two octopus at the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh? That's its, its tentacles down here, or its arms, technically. Octopus have arms, not tentacles. Really tall too. Oh, there's this head. Wow, that's cool. That's really cool. Oh, this is neat. Japan heritage. And it's the story of Mulberry City woven by locals' prayers. And there's an audio guide. Mount Takao is said to be filled with Reiki, the spiritual power of life. It has been revered as a sacred mountain since ancient times, and this gate symbolically marks the entrance to its sacred precincts. We're about to walk up the stairs to Yakuo Temple. Yakuo-in Temple. And this is a Japan heritage site, so it's not an official UNESCO World Heritage Site. But they have it labeled as Japan Heritage. sites in Japan. It's a religious site, but then it's also a fun place to stop and get snacks and souvenirs. Cool, the Guardian 
sides of the gate. These are similar to the ones we saw in Asakusa at Kaminari, Kaminari Mon. Mm. Kaminari Mon. <sighs> the dudes with the giant shoes that we saw at Kaminari Mon. Yeah. Cool. This place is neat because it has a lot of QR codes that people could scan if they really wanted to read about it and learn about it. I don't know if you can see it, but that is a giant Tengu mask that has lotus blossoms on either side of it. You can see his, his red nose is pointing right at us. It is really hard to see. It's cool. And then he has some of those sandals in front of him. These are geta, though, instead of the waraji that we saw at Kaminari, Kaminari Mon. That's hard to say. No, it's hard for me to say. Oh, there he is again. So Tengu and then his friend next to him. There's a lot of cool statues here. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Those are Buddhist the guardian deities, yeah. The of the and then the year of the snake. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Rabbit. View in Tokyo. Or I mean, not Tokyo proper, but. Yeah. It does seem a little disingenuous to call this Tokyo, but it is technically Tokyo. So the Tengu are considered. Which the, what's the Tengu? Tengu is the guy with the big red nose. Oh. Um, he's considered the messenger of the gods, and they were apparently arrogant, proud, boastful people who were reincarnated as Tengu instead of a, you know something better. <laughs> This statue of this monk are a Tengu and then his bird friend. Octopus on the left. Oh, there's octopus like the octopus cedar. Mm -hmm. And you can write your prayers on these sticks mm. for 300 yen. Offerings of apples and some kind of alcohol.
no photo. This is the third and highest so far temple slash shrine that we've been to. So I say temple slash shrine because they were connected for a long time. We're coming up on a shrine to Inari. And Inari is a fox god. And unlike in Korea and some Chinese folklore, foxes are not bad characters in Japanese mythology. They are able to protect the rice, and rice is money, rice is life, rice is the spirit of the emperor. And so we have Inari. Some people see this and they'll say Kitsune, but that's, that's not what this is. This is Inari. In the, one of the types of uh, votive tablets, which they call Ema, that you can buy here to write your prayers on and uh, offer to the kami, are shoes, sandals. We saw those earlier. So you can see where there's some large ones that have been offered, and then some small ones offered in front of the other small shrine. There's been a temple slash shrine in this area on this mountain since the 700s. So for sure history back to the 740s. And then they have maybe even better records since it was rebuilt and done up in the 1200s, which would have been at the beginning of the Kamakura era. Buddhism was becoming more and more uniquely Japanese during the Kamakura era because it was mixing together with Shintoism. It was only really separated during the Meiji Restoration because Buddhism, Zen Buddhism specifically, was so closely tied with the samurai and the emperor's supporters were trying to really knock the samurai out. Um, after the samurai were defeated and disbanded at the end of the, uh, their civil war before the Meiji Restoration. Remember when a Japanese tourism website tells you that a path is mostly flat. This is what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was most most of it was flat, but <laughs> look, that's it's not like a few steps. That's mostly flat right there. Uh, it is. This is mostly. And it's flat. just a bunch of mostly flat parts. Mostly flat parts. All raised a bit yeah. from one to the Well, how many steps do we already climb? Like fifty. <laughs> um. 50. <laughs> when? Like maybe a minute ago. Yeah, that's what I mean. Every time I turn yeah. this thing off, we're doing steps so y'all don't hear us. <laughs> it 
it is, however, for people who have scoliosis and a bad knee. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, man. Okay. I'm listening to you from now on. At least we got it all time. Okay. Because we got more stairs to go. Squirrels, food. owls, a Hungry badger. Food. Oh. So I'm gonna need to sit here for a minute and, and, and see at least one of those things. Mountain friend. <laughs> it's so much like the Appalachians. Except that's city. Well, yeah, it, it is, though. It really is. Mm -hmm. patient we may be able to see it I'm starting to see a good chunk of it mm -hmm. through the clouds while I bust out this water we can cash it and mm -hmm. wait a few minutes before mm -hmm. we walk back down 6,000 steps <laughs> mm -hmm. all right so we just Spent the afternoon taking our time having fun, but also just learning that the last ride down the fun is at 4 30. <laughs> Trying to catch it. to the way we came up, but we found something different. Can I sit down too? I mean, I, oh. 
guess. That was a good walk. 